My dear sisters and brothers in Christ, I want to reiterate the greetings that I gave to all of you who have come here for this marvelous celebration this evening. I want to particularly thank the priests who joined us and uh, friends of the sisters who are maybe not from this parish, and thank you, the parishioners, for coming. I want to thank Father uh, Jeffrey Persley, my Episcopal Vicar, who is also the Vicar for Religious Women and Men in the English sector, for working closely with the sisters these past uh, few months since he took over to the office and helping prepare the celebration. It's a bit of grief because, you know, we have a new Pope who doesn't have a chauffeur. He's my chauffeur. <laughs> my driver, I call him. It's clear from the recent activities in Rome that the Holy Spirit is still at work in our church. In the election of the new Bishop of Rome and our Holy Father. The fact that he's a Jesuit, we won't go into tonight. <laughs> it's also true, I think, that the Holy Spirit is at work, as we can tell from the gift of the Church of the new forms of religious life that are rising up in our midst, including the Queenship of Mary Sisters who are here with us tonight. In the Gospel and in the opening hymn tonight, we sang about Jesus as the light of the world and our desire to walk in that light. And that's really what the women who are consecrating themselves to the Lord tonight are all about. They have found Jesus as the light illuminating their experience, their heart, their desire to give of themselves as disciples of Jesus in a very special way, a total way, under the laws of poverty, chastity, and obedience. The reading today, the Gospel, is an extension of yesterday's Gospel, where Jesus forgave the adulterous woman in the temple area. Allowing ourselves in all that we say and do to be illuminated by Christ in his way of life is important not only for sisters, for your bishops, but also for every lay person, every disciple of Christ. And that attempt uh, that Jesus makes to enlighten the Pharisees, who were religious purists, who departed from the way that leads to life that Jesus offered with himself as the center, makes us think. And the Holy Father last week uh, drew our attention to a very important feature that sometimes even religious people can allow something else to displace Christ from being the center of their lives. He said, and this is talking to the Cardinals who elected him Pope, Bishop of Rome, we can be priests, bishops, cardinals, and even Pope, but not be disciples. Disciples are those who, in humility, learn from God how to act and how to be. A warning for us to take part in this celebration this evening. We see ourselves as disciples called to be with Jesus, but there can be a hardening of our hearts. There can be a conviction that something that we think is important maybe is not important in the way that Christ wants it to be important. We always need to be open to conversion. And here is where the Holy Spirit comes in. It was spoken about in the first reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. The Holy Spirit comes and constantly assists us even when we don't know how to pray. See, that's kind of a strange thing for Christians not to know how to pray, but Paul says that. We don't know how to pray as we ought. And we have to allow the Holy Spirit to pray in us the deepest thoughts of God. And so we have to be careful that we don't depart from this gift of the Spirit. All of us here in this year 2012, 2013, which is the year of faith, and Pope Benedict XVI and John, uh, Pope Francis already are calling us to take part in the new evangelization. That's really at the core of what these sisters are about tonight. We want the new evangelization to be new and it's harder. We're all fired up. His methods, how's it going to be? Well, they've chosen to return to wearing a formal religious habit of veil when in the past a lot of us not been accustomed. New methods really go back to some old ones. I knew it is expression. Most of the sisters in the past taught or did hostile work, and the sisters here feel themselves called to the new evangelization. 
and to be people who intercede and pray for priests to help them in the call. And we're grateful then for this sign of these sisters here who want to really embody what John Paul II called for in a new evangelization that has a new order, new methods, and new expressions. Although we didn't read from Luke's Gospel <clears throat> yesterday or today, he's reading the Gospel of choice in this year, St. Luke, you're seen. And Jesus there anticipates the mission of the Gentiles, paralleling and expanding the mission of the Twelve. And he notes that there were women who followed Jesus and ministered to the Apostles and to the Lord. And I think that's really what the sisters, the Queen of Mary, want to do. They want to be there for priests who are set aside for particular ministry and to encourage them because sometimes the burdens of ministry can be great. We need somebody to challenge and give hospitality and welcome. Our challenge is to continue to interpret what that means for today and we're grateful for the sisters for doing that. As we continue the Eucharist and witness the commitment that these sisters are making, let's each one of us open ourselves to the call of the Lord which he wants to address in each one of our hearts tonight. So we may know what our vocational life is, in a single state, marriage, priesthood, consecrated life, the diaconate, there's so many different ways in which we can witness to the Lord. And we would each know what it is that God's calling us to, and help us to embrace it fully, so we may live our lives as disciples of Christ, live in the light of Christ all the days of our life. May God bless you all, help us all to be what we're called to be, Disciples who walk in the light of Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Amen.